Angela Sasser is an artist based out of Atlanta, Georgia. She grew up in a multicultural family and spent much of her life traveling as a military brat. It was in Germany that Angela fell in love with fantasy and the collected stories of the Grimm's brothers and Hans Christian Andersen. She dreamed that one day she might follow in their footsteps and tell stories to awe and terrify future generations, capturing that sense of danger, triumph, and hidden magic. Her other influences include Art Nouveau, the Pre-Raphaelites, and Surrealism. These days, Angela is living her dream and will have her first illustrated book, Angelic Visions, coming out from Impact Books with the hopes of many more to come. Angela invites you to introduce yourself on her Angelic Shades forum at shadowscript.angelicshades.com where you can get in on critiques with the artist, find tips and tricks for artists and writers, take tutorials, and do other fun activities. In this video workshop, Angela demonstrates a variety of basic skin tones, layering color to create depth and luminosity for figures that come to life on the page. Alrighty, you notice that the purple is standing out too much. Just go over that again until it looks blended to you. just about done and we're gonna let this layer dry as well and come back to it now that the midtone layer is dry it's time for my favorite step which is bringing out the deep shadows and outlining the figure and I'll be using a 10-0 round for this and the color dark umber This is basically where you go back in the deepest crevices here, like the inside where the eye is, and add a brown accent. And again, if this is too much contrast, you can thin it out with water and smooth that in, blending it. And this is why we wait for each layer to dry, because if you try to use a lot of water on top of an already wet layer, it would just goop up and look murky. So you want to be sure your layers are dry before you come back in. And I'm only adding a small hint of brown to the deepest parts of the shadow. That would be areas like her nostril. Her ear, just the inside right here. And again, I love this step because I get to bring out all of the fun features of the face. And I personally don't like to leave the outline just with a pencil. I like to come back and bring out the outline with the brown. It just pops out the highlights and makes it look better in my opinion. And if your line starts to get ragged, that means you need more water on your brush. So that way you get a smooth line. And the great thing about having a painting on the board is you can move it around so you can outline easier.
if you get too much water in your brush, you can blot in your paper towel again. I'm still seeing some purple showing through, so I'm layering more brown on top of that. And the purple basically counterbalances the orange and yellow tones of your later layers. So that way your person isn't like glowing bright yellow or pink. It all kind of balances out, which is why we use so many layers. I also like to come and make sure I have a solid line here by practicing on the paper towel first. See too much water, so I need a little more pigment until I get a nice flowing line like that. This is where you can go insane with detail. So that's also the fun part.